We're back for another Caravan of Garbage, the show where we look at things and go like, hey, what, what, do you, what do you think of this? What do we think of this? And then people yell at us about our opinions, Oftentimes, whether they be good or bad. Oftentimes they say, uh, why, why is this movie in Caravan of Garbage? It's not garbage. And we say to them, it's just the title of the, the, the video series. We, we, didn't, we didn't think it through that much. We didn't think it that hard. Anyway. <laughs> Leave a like if you could. Yeah, this week. This and week a comment. This week we're talking about Man of Steel. Well, look, we're covering the complete oeuvre of Zack Snyder, except not... Dawn of the Dead, and not uh, that Owls movie. No, not just the Owls movie. Just his DC stuff. To open things up, as I think we should, let's just talk about Krypton and what's going on okay. in Krypton. I know it's a nonsense planet that doesn't make any sense. You sure? But I love it. Right. I love that it's not just crystals and glass and people mm. in white coats going, well, it's happened. I mean, there's, there's a bit of that. Sure. But it's just, it's weird dirty rocks and giant dragonflies it's and got gold an, helmets. It's got a particular planned beautiful aesthetic yes a ridiculous aesthetic that makes no sense as i've as i've maybe perhaps mentioned in previous videos what do you do on the planet krypton like if you're not a if you're not a warrior or you're yep. not a scientist you're not on a council yeah what do you do because there's nothing in any of the rooms <laughs> there doesn't seem to be anywhere can you go to the movies and if so do you have to catch a dragon giant dragonfly and fly to the movies is the movies just a giant pin art screen <laughs> and you're like who is anybody in this i feel maybe there's the unanswered question is that if you go over one of those you know endless beautiful mountain ranges there's just regular suburbs <laughs> yeah, right. it's just people going to the mall <laughs> just going apartment to, buildings going to, going to play mini golf you know the strange thing about the pin art which is the way you communicate and you're like is that my wife i can't really tell uh-huh they also have incredibly lifelike holograms. So yeah. it's weird that they would defer to that. Well, there's a moment in the earlier part of the movie where Jor-El is talking to Lara, his wife, yes. and he's seeing her on a, on a pin board, yep. and she says, Jor-El, look out! <laughs> so she can see him and all his surroundings, but he can just see the pin board. Yeah. So she, is she looking at a TV screen? I don't know. That being said... I love the idea of how they set up this doomed Krypton, the way that they often do, where it's just dumb bureaucrats in stupid hats being like, the planet's not dying, religion will live forever, and right, whatever, so and then the planet explodes. It's the dumbest council in the world who then put all the racists and, and horrible <laughs> kind of blood-feuding families in dick rockets and fire them to well, safety. Look, I, have, look I, have so many, I have so many questions about the whole thing. First of all, they're like, exactly. They're like, well, we have precisely 10 devices that... Uh, we'll you know, usher you to safety. Yeah, that's right. Should we use them? No, let's give them to the criminals. <laughs> let's definitely do that. Secondly, Jor-El mentions to, to Zod at some point during the Krypton sequence that the birth of his and Lara's child is the first natural birth in centuries. Heresy! Heresy! Which, for me, opens this whole big can of worms. It's yeah. like, is maybe the reason that everybody on this planet is so angry is nobody's been laid in like 300 years? Is that... Look, I'd imagine there's still... Is that why all the stuff looks like dicks? Is that? Is this just I'm asking? I'm, I'm asking. And the thing is, these questions I have about this society and this council and why they do the things they do... Bear in mind, this isn't a criticism. I have criticisms. Sure. Criticisms, but I'm going to get to them. But they're a dying, doomed civilization and they just do dumb things. Yeah. So I'm entirely okay with it. I also like the idea that jor is this guy who he was born as a scientist, he was raised to be a scientist, and he just goes, you know what, I'm going to teach myself Kung Fu. Right. And fucking no one sees it coming. Right. When they're just walking him off, they don't think he's just going to be throwing elbows. <laughs> They've all been raised that way, and he's just tearing through them, because he probably, you know, he, he took a year off to probably just practice some a, Kung he Fu. He took a year off and he watched the Dark Knight trilogy is what <laughs> happened. That's why he's throwing out all those knees and elbows. I love it, though. Yeah. I love that idea that in this civilization, you can go beyond yourself if you want to, and it's unusual, and nobody expects it. You can birth your own child. Yeah. He's the only man with a dick on that planet, is what I'm saying. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. We don't have any evidence for or against, but I'm just saying, if you didn't have one, maybe you'd be grumpy. God damn, Michael Shannon is good in this. Right, good. He's terrifying, mm -hmm. and you believe everything that he's saying. Physically, he looks good. Like mm -hmm. He looks like a guy who could potentially be a foil to a Superman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, He's got a lot of good ideas that are right because he's like, the planet's exploding and I want to stop that. But he cuts but, his own hair. <laughs> but he cuts his own hair. And then, of course, also there's the weird bloodline racist stuff that, yeah, that, <laughs> that I don't agree weird, with. Yeah. But I think like all good villains, they've got a point to an extent. Oh, yeah, you know? absolutely. Yeah. And he's just being pushed that little bit too far because people aren't listening to him. Yeah, I mean, there's yeah. even a point when, when Zod and, and Jor-El have their first conversation in that throne room. Yeah. And I'm going, 
Well, they say, why wouldn't they be on the same side? And yeah. then it, oh, the racism. I see, I get it. I get it now. Right, uh-huh. Yeah, that's it. I love all the uh, Codex Bloodline stuff, and it's all kept in, like, an ancient Kryptonian monkey skull. Yeah. And it's it's really important. they got to usher it off the planet, and he dives into the pool, and he swims through, and the alarm system goes off, and he's, and he's in his tight Superman onesie. I love it. Yeah. I'm all for it. His super drawers, yes. That's right. And then when he grabs it, and he climbs out, and he just cracks, cracks it, it on, on the a rock. <laughs> Clack. That's fine, don't even worry about it. <laughs> just this skull that's millions of years old. It would have been a much shorter movie if he just did it. Oh, it's a it's a very old skull. I didn't factor that in. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's turned to dust now. Here's a tip for you. Mm. Uh, Jorel, where's the codex? I threw it in the bin. I broke it when I climbed out <laughs> of the pool. That's right. Then Zod would be like, that's actually pretty plausible. And now that <laughs> I think it, it was very fragile. Oh, well, I guess our civilization's done. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So yeah, I like all the Krypton stuff. In summary... And I like that they just, just didn't defer to the Crystal, Chris Reeve stuff, which again, I also like, and they oh. borrow that a lot in the comics, but this is a different Superman. And I think the criticisms that have been leveled at this is that it's not the Chris Reeve version, but it's di it's different, and that's and that's okay. It's a different universe. I don't agree with everything that they've done here, uh -huh. but at least it's not Superman Returns is what I'm saying. Exactly, precisely, <laughs> yes. yes. I also like how most of the growing up stuff with Clark is done in flashback. I had a question about the flashbacks. In sure. fact, I, it's, it's not a question, James. I'll rephrase. I have a theory about the flashbacks. Okay. Because a lot of this is, it's it's modern day Clark Kent, and then it flashes back to a uh, an important moment in young Clark's yeah. life. In re-watching this, I feel pretty confident in saying that I think they put the flashbacks in the wrong order and nobody noticed until the movie came out and then it was too late to do anything about it. Because there's a scene in the movie, present day Clark, he's working at like a, like a truck stop diner and a guy gives him some grief. Yep. And then later in the movie, like half an hour later, there's a flashback where young Clark Kent is being like pushed around by some bullies. And the question is, what kind of man are you going to grow up to be Clark? Are sure, you going yeah. uh, to stand up to bullies? We know it happened <laughs> half an hour ago and we know exactly what he's going to do he's going to take all the abuse then he's going to walk outside and he's going to impale the guy's truck on a bunch of logs and then he's going to leave do you think that's too far to ruin this man's livelihood potentially uh, i think he deserved it i think he kind of deserved it but also clark's like six foot four right and yeah. this guy was like maybe a foot shorter than yeah him. i love that moment where he shoves him and, nothing and it's just he's just yeah. a wall he doesn't even yeah. flinch and the guy's face is just like, what, yeah, right. what has just happened? But also, it's a rowdy truck stop bar. And I guess my question is, it wouldn't be out of place if a guy who worked at the bar was like, you're making trouble, stop doing that or I'll throw you out. Yeah. Just pick him up and hurl him out the door. Yeah, absolutely. And the boss would be like, good job, Clark. Yeah. You know? That being said, his father puts him on a path in this movie where it's very lucky that he didn't turn out to be the kid from Brightburn. Oh, yeah. I just think one of my major problems with this movie is the characterization of Jonathan Kent. Mm. And I think he mostly is done right in Smallville, Chris Reeve movies, a lot of the animated stuff, mm -hmm. comics. He's done right a lot of the time because he pushes Clark to better himself. And Clark's like, I want to play sport and, you know, and, and show people what I can do. And he's and like... Clark Kent's often like, run second. You know? <laughs> yeah, he's exactly. Like, what, you want to be a pro athlete. You think that's the extent of your abilities. That's yeah, right, what uh -huh. you want to do with these amazing gifts that you have. You uh -huh. need to think bigger. You need to think about humanity. Think about how many logs you can put through a truck, <laughs> Yeah, that's Clark. right. How many? Yeah. But yeah, this version of Park Kent is very much like, I don't think you should try, Clark. I think you should hide away. Yeah. It's so important that you don't bring any attention to you being any different from anybody else. P.S. I took this piece of metal from your spaceship <laughs> and I brought it to a metallurgist and he was like, this is a crazy piece of metal. I've never encountered anything like this in my entire life. Anyway, here's the piece of metal back and I'm never going to mention this ever again. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. One rule for Park and it's one rule for Clark, isn't it? I also, I have a massive problem with the tornado death. I've written here, the death of Park Kent is the dumbest death in the history of cinema. <laughs> I don't know about the dumbest death it's in history of cinema. It's the dumbest death. The idea also that it's not even the moment where he doesn't rescue him, which he could, because first of all, nobody is looking at Clark in that yeah. moment. Everyone's looking at Park Kent. He could run in, grab him. No one would even see what happened. Yeah. The other thing is, before they even get to the underpass, he says to Clark, I'll go back for the dog. Here, carry this kid. I move at regular speed and yes. I can get my foot caught in a, in a, car, in a, in a car door. Yeah. If it happened to you, you'd walk through it like it was tinfoil. All the steps leading up to that make no sense. Well, they make sense if you consider that that scene needed to be dramatic and move the plot forward. I also think the lesson doesn't work. Look, again, this isn't the Chris Reeve movies. Yeah. And I don't want it to be. But in those movies, the lesson learnt from Clark Kent's dad is he dies of a heart attack and he realises that despite all his insane powers, 
he can't save everybody. Yeah. But this is a scenario he where he have. definitely could have saved this him. Is the, I think this is intended to be his Spider-Man Uncle Ben with great power comes great responsibility thing, and he and he decided not to, and that's a real a big mistake he made. Yeah. But there, there's no there was no villain here. It was just a big gust of wind. Big gust of wind. And yeah, and it's it's like Pa Kent went in there like, well, it'd be a bit suspicious if you went in there and saved the dog and survived. So me, a much older man with no powers, going in. <laughs> who's definitely going to die. It'll make much more sense if I come out of this alive, which I won't. I'm gonna die. Anyway. Also, if I could just refer everybody to groundzeroshelters.com. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is in relation to hiding under an underpass I'm with listening. a tornado. Don't do it. I will say this though about their relationship, mm -hmm. getting back to the Jonathan Kent thing. That moment where they're talking about where he's from and he just has this real existential crisis of like, oh, not that I'm adopted, I'm not from this planet. Uh -huh, and yeah. he's just like, I want to just be a regular kid. Why can't I just be your son? And he's like, you are my son. None of that None of that matters. Like, fuck all that. Like, yeah. the, the most important thing is that, you know, I still love you despite all of this. I think that's a terrific moment. Again, the problem with Jonathan Kent isn't the performance or little moments like that. It's mm -hmm. the fact that he's a dumb dad who dies in a tornado. And I think, mate, per is, it, was that the idea behind, okay, well, well, Jor-El is like the big man of action. Sure. And Pa Ken is the man of, just sit calmly in your seat and keep your seatbelt on. Yes, I and think... And they needed that contrast to be like, he's got to choose one. I think that is the idea, but he's too much of a downer. Like, he's yeah. dragging him down too much. Yeah. You know? I can understand him going... I'm glad that tornado took him, quite frankly. <laughs> yeah, did everybody a favour. Who knows what would have happened. I think Henry Cavill's great in this. I think so too. I think he gets less and less to do in these movies after this one. I think he's kind of hard done by in Batman v Superman, which we'll come back to. But... I think overall, with the material that he is given, the physicality of the performance, how he looks. How hairy his chest how is. How hairy his chest is. I love that. That's very Death of Superman. Throwing that mm -hmm. back in. I'm okay with it. I think he's terrific. How yeah. do you feel about him and the suit, though? He's got the range as an actor, and he's got the potential mm. to be the Superman that maybe is one that's filled with hope. And yeah. filled with, but again, the one they shoehorn into the end of Justice League. That's exactly right. Yeah. And again, if you want a grim and gritty Superman, he can do that as well. Yeah. And then, you know, at this point, we didn't know that whether it was going to be a franchise or not. Yeah. It was just a kind of standalone. Um, I think they should have put in the underpants. I think the problem with this suit is, and I generally like it, especially the cape. I think yep. the cape looks great. It's too muted compared to the also muted world. Like he doesn't yeah. pop enough out of it. I and think. The, and the, uh, the. And I'm not saying don't go garish spandex, uh -huh. but I'm saying. Wear something that kind of lifts him above the kind of grey tone of a lot of this movie. And that lifts him above the villains. Because in this <laughs> yes. movie, there's, a, there's even a moment where the, the soldiers are like, oh, the, the boss is like, open fire. And they're like, even the man in blue? <laughs> like, I think they're all wearing blue. I don't know. I'm on a battlefield. Bluish, greyish? I don't know what colour anybody is. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'll just keep shooting. Also, I think Lois Lane is great in this. Mm -hmm. I think she's probably the best Lois Lane. I know that's kind of heresy. <laughs> yes. If you look back again at the 70s movies and the other versions that we've got. But I think she does a lot of actual reporting. She does a lot of screaming. There's a lot of screaming, but not too much screaming. She does a lot of being invited to like a military mm. base where they're digging up something and they don't know what it is yet, but they're like, we better bring the media just in case. Yeah, that's just right. Just in case this is an alien thing, and then we can <laughs> deny all knowledge of it after showing it to her. Let's talk about an alien thing. Okay. I would like the idea of the Fortress of Solitude in this, that it's a crashed scout ship from uh -huh, yep. thousands of years prior. Uh -huh. I think that's an interesting take on that in the sense that you can plug in, you know, like a new Kryptonian key and all of a sudden it's it's your ship. It's your sure, Fortress right, of uh -huh. Solitude. Yes. I like that a lot. But they also kind of entirely abandon it in, in later movies in terms of a place that Superman can go to for refuge. Yeah, and it's yeah. also it was also intended, I think, as well to be potentially the origin story of Supergirl as well. Oh, we're, we're gonna we'll come back to that. Yeah, we've seen Empty Pod there, yeah. yeah. You know what I also like about this movie? Yeah. There's not so much kryptonite as there is. He hadn't been recently exposed to the Kryptonian atmosphere, and that is his kryptonite. Yeah, it's this really heavy environment that he's just not used to. Yeah, right. And it's just this crushing weight on him. I think that's a really interesting idea. I also like the physicality of all the Kryptonians in this. The moment where Zod flips that truck like it's a tin can. Yep. The fight scene in Smallville mm. is amazing. I agree, yeah. It's so good. And again, you know, I there are there are elements of the Christopher Reeve Superman movies that I like and don't like. There's, you know, some great Superman and Justice League cartoons that have, have great characterizations of Superman, but I mm. feel like this is the first movie 
that we really feel the physicality of beings that can yeah. fly, you know, beyond the speed of sound and just crash into buildings and destroy them. I hops, I hops, and with and Sears, uh, <laughs> R.I.P. Uh, and 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 just not feel it. Yes, but at the same time. They can be damaged, yes. which I think also raises the stakes for everybody and means the army serves an actual purpose there. They might not be greatly impacting what's going on, uh-huh. but they have some play in what is going yeah, on in that exactly, scenario. Yeah. Yeah. At one point, Fayora does get hit by a missile and she is yeah. at least temporarily knocked out. So yeah, we know, we know, I guess, at least until they achieve their yeah. full Superman level powers, yeah. you know, the longer they spend on Earth. But but until that time, they are kind of vulnerable. Also, Fiora and Christopher Maloney's character, to me, yes. have this weird romantic subplot. Definitely. They never say anything, but I feel like Christopher <laughs> Maloney's character, whose name I cannot recall, nor will I look up, because he's always Christopher Maloney in everything to me. That's all we need. Uh, beautiful man. Immediately upon seeing her, you see him fall in love. Yes. Like, oh, oh, my stars. <laughs> what, a be- what a beautiful <laughs> alien lady. Mm. But what I also like about that scene, which doesn't play in the final battle of in Metropolis, he's actively saving people and trying to prevent destruction. Uh-huh. And I and look, we will get to it, but that is a major problem for me in this movie. The world engine is is not terrible. Well, I've written here, not only is it not terrible, but it's the perfect superhero movie finale machine because it generates both fire and smoke and it shoots a blue sky beam. Yeah, so it does it, can, it all. It's just, <laughs> hey, you want an environment for a finale? You want some smoke to obscure some bad CGI? You want yep. a laser beam to know that there's <laughs> some stakes happening? There's a Look, I hope that laser beam doesn't go yeah. on too long because otherwise big trouble. So we've got to talk about the finale. I know people have, have kind of excused it to death and uh-huh. we've been openly criticised for, for saying that why does Superman not so much knock down so many buildings, which he does, yes. but also allow this to happen. There's even a moment where they go into space and they drop back straight down. Back, back into the like city. Go the city somewhere Metropolis, else, yeah. obviously. To be fair, that is addressed at the start of Batman v Superman, which, which we'll come back to. Like, why is he doing this? It all looks good. The yep. punching is great. It's all very realistic. But the idea that he decides to wipe Krypton out entirely by crashing that ship into so many buildings, killing not only what's left of his planet, but also tens of thousands of people in Metropolis. To be fair, we never actually see any human deaths. I I believe Zack Snyder made the point of saying it's something like 5,000 people were were killed, which is... A lot of deaths confirmed. It's quite a lot. How many people did we lose Metropolis that fateful day? I mean, probably 5,000 people or something like that. But then it all comes down to that one moment of a neck snap. Oh, yes. And people say that uh, an excuse is that what was he supposed to do in that scenario? Fly away? (laughs) Use his super speed to move those people out of the way? (laughs) Yeah, sure. All of those things. Uh, Maybe he could stand in front of the heat vision, move really fast. Well, that's my point. Just write a different scenario. Yep. You know, I understand that he wants to save people. It's not the killing Zod that I so much have a problem with because he does kill occasionally. He'll kill if he has to. Well, here's the thing as well, is that it also builds up to a moment where he kills Zod and then he's torn up, he's destroyed by it. And again, if you know Superman Mm. as a character, you go, well, he probably doesn't, tries not to kill that many people. But if you don't know Superman, you've just seen... Two hours of a, of a guy just, just ramming through buildings. And, like, at one point he, like, drags a, a Kryptonian, like, through a city by his face. Yeah. And it's like, why? You, you tried to kill him, like, yeah. like, 20 minutes ago. Why are you concerned that you had to kill him now? Exactly. Like, if you don't know who you Superman... You exterminated your race, essentially. Yes. If you didn't know who Superman was, you'd be like, why is, why is he feeling so sad at this last kill? Yeah. He seemed to be bang up for it a minute ago. Yeah, it's, it's strange to me. And it's interesting because... Christopher Nolan had a big hand in this movie. Yeah, right. I don't, I don't have proof of this, but I feel like they offered him Man of Steel to direct. Yeah, right. He's a producer and he has a writing credit. He didn't like the idea of Superman killing at the end and, and was kind of talked around to it. Mm-hmm. But I feel like tonally it doesn't fit with the rest of the movie. Again, it's not mm. the killing. It's, yeah. the, it's the execution of this scenario. Yeah. That Executions, I- right? <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. And if you know, if you've if you've recently seen maybe an Avengers movie or something like that, where the heroes kill people is all the time, as a matter of course, you'd yeah. be like, I guess you you got to do that sometimes. You got to do it's it. Fine, yeah. You know? Anyways, here's a section of the show called "We Give You Some Trivia." <laughs> oh uh, but also bear in mind we don't mention every bit of trivia. If you do want that, go read a list of trivia because we're almost certainly not going to mention everything. Like how you see the <laughs> Bruce Wayne satellite in space. Yes, I saw it. You see the LexCorp truck. <laughs> yeah. You see a LexCorp truck. That's right. Right. So, Supergirl, you mentioned that. Now, Zack Snyder has said that the open pod that we see on the Kryptonian ship, that was something more than oh, Supergirl. 
That being said, there is a prequel comic in where it, it is, is definitely a Supergirl, version of. Yeah. That being said, he almost certainly didn't have a hand in writing that. That's right. But I do wonder whether it was going to be the Eradicator. Maybe it was Doomsday at some point. Yeah, right, uh-huh. You know what? It was, it was a box of potential. That's what it was. Yeah, that's right. A mystery box. It's put in a mystery box and be like, what do you think it's going to be, audience? Also, you know how they all get sucked into the Phantom Zone at the end? Yes. Uh, he mentioned that Feora maybe survived. Okay. And uh, so my question is, did Christopher Maloney end up in the Phantom zone do you think he could come back potentially? Yes. I just wanted to do the rhyme. I loved it. <laughs> but do you think he could though? I think they did and I think they're going to come back married. <laughs> that's how it's going to work. <laughs> yeah. And also, of course, we can't go past mentioning that uh, General Swanwick is Martian Manhunter. Potentially he is, yeah. yeah. Or so it's been revealed by Zack Snyder. It has. Is, yeah. There's some storyboards that led to the idea that he was going to be revealed to be he was basically protecting Earth the, the entire time as Martian Manhunter. It's funny that when uh, Superman was in the interrogation room and he x-rayed everybody, he yeah. didn't notice that General Swanwick was, in fact, a Martian Manhunter at all. But the thing is, maybe he did. Oh. He's not the kind of guy to be like, guy's an alien. He did point out that guy's <laughs> lifesavers, though. So, you know, he's up for spilling some secrets. That's all I'm saying. That's entirely possible, yeah. Look, I have one more piece of trivia. I love trivia! I have one more, one more unearthed note here. Uh, it just says, the editor-in-chief of the uh, Daily Planet, Perry White, has a single diamond earring, and I want to know the story behind it. <laughs> I mean, maybe it's just a fashion statement. Maybe there's something more. I don't know. But He I'd got love, divorced. I'd love, that's what I think happened. I'd love, to, I'd love to... That's it. I'd love to read that prequel comic, is all I'm saying. <laughs> so if somebody's making it, yeah, please send me an advanced copy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there is all that Daily Planet stuff, which I don't mind, but then at the end they're like, hey, uh, Jenny Olsen, do you want to go on a date? Yeah, where do you want to go to? The giant crater in the middle of Metropolis? <laughs> Would you like to just sit and sit there with me? But there is a good moment where they're all going to get crushed and they're all sitting together and holding hands. I'm okay with it. Yeah. It shows that there are people in this left. enormous... Yeah, left in this alive. enormous battle. Yeah. Overall, though, like, honestly, and I know we've been heavy on the criticism for a lot of this, I like more but of this... But we've had a lot of laughs along the yeah, way, Jess. Yeah. But seriously, I like more of this movie than I don't. Mm -hmm, I think it gets a lot of it right. I think though, at the same time, there is no definitive live action modern version of Superman that we've gotten yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like Henry Cavill could definitely come back and do that at some point. Yes. I would like to see that. This is just for me, it's an interesting interpretation, but it's, it doesn't all come together for me. Yeah, I think you're right. And again, action sequences are great. It looks great. Yep. It's very well acted and well cast. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also this, this to me, this idea, and it's the, you know, the, the flashbacks are a symptom of it. It's, he doesn't have a character arc, this Superman. Mm. At no point are you surprised that he becomes Superman and he saves the day at the end. Like, yeah. there's, no mo there's, no, there's no tension where you're like, what signs are you going to choose? I mean, we know it's Superman, but it's still, it would <laughs> yeah. be nice. It'd be nice. It'd be nice if we could play pretend for two hours. You know what I mean? And that's what it's all about, isn't it? That's right. Just pretending literally anything else is happening in the world. Like a giant alien invasion. God, what a relief. Oh my that God, that feels so good. <laughs> just to think about something else oh just for a second. Oh my God, if I, I'll just, just, just the thing that I can knife fight, you know what I mean? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Anyways, this has been Caravan of Garbage. We do this every week. We throw polls up on Patreon to be like, hey, what do you want to see? This was much requested. That's why we're doing it. And of course, I love talking about these movies. I Me could too. talk about these movies forever. Come back next week because we're going to be doing Batman v Superman. Yeah, the, uh, the, the Dawn the of Justice. Justice. That's correct, yes. <laughs> That's right. It's a very long yes. title for a very long movie. I think we'll probably do the extended cut, right? All right, sure. Yeah, well, cool. I guess that's the version you know we're supposed to see. I think that's the idea. That is, it's very definitive. Isn't yeah, it? I'm looking forward to revisiting that because, boy, do I have thoughts mostly about that jar of piss. We'll come back to it. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, subscribe if you want. That'd be great. And, of course, we have a podcast called The Weekly Planet where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. It comes out every Monday morning. We just we do that, don't we? We sure do. If you want Snyder Cut updates, mate. There's going to be Snyder Cut updates until the Snyder Cut is released and beyond. So That's if right. So if you're on board with that, if you if you like two idiots having thoughts about it. You're going to get that. You're going to get that. And you'll In have opinions spades. also. That's right. All right, see you guys. Uh, grab that gem, you guys. We'll see you next week. Goodbye.